about irregular figures. Irregular figures are when they're not normal circles, parallelograms, triangles, or trapezoids. We talked a little bit about it with parallelograms, but this unit's going to get a little more in-depth with it. Okay? So first we have our four area formulas for our circle, parallelogram, triangle, and trapezoid. It's good to have all four handy. So those are the four shapes you're looking for within those irregular figures. All right. So if you have any irregular the first thing you want to do is identify of the circle, parallel, trapezoid make up your regular figure. A pretty straightforward one. You'll notice that you have a half circle up here and a half circle down here. Okay. Now this unit is called symmetric figures. So you're assuming that everything is symmetrical. So that this part down here is exactly the same as this part up here. Hard to say. I drew it by hand, but if you had a problem in the book, it'd be very clear that those two things were the same thing. Okay. So since we have two half a circles, really all together, circle with a radius of 12. We see our radius right here of 12. And once we figure that out, that's the hard part. Figure out the formula is pretty easy. I'm just going to do pi times my radius 12 squared. And I get roughly is 452 centimeters squared. We're going to try a slightly more challenging one. All right, here's my new regular figure. Now, this one is definitely more challenging than the last one. So, remember, your first thing you want to look for is what shapes you recognize. You're looking for circles, parallelograms, triangles, and trapezoids. Now, when I first look at this, it has a lot of sides. I might notice that I can make a little rectangle in here. Maybe if I split it up enough, I can maybe get a trapezoid and another rectangle in here and so on. But times when you get tricky shapes like this, it's almost easier to see what from the original shape. Do you see that there's a gigantic rectangle here? I can kind of close it off. If I do this, if I add a line there and there, I have a gigantic rectangle. Okay, so that's one shape I recognize. Now down here, up here, the two shapes that were removed from my rectangle are both trapezoids. So I think it's going to be a much easier route to find my gigantic rectangle and remove, take away the two trapezoids than to try and split this into a bunch of rectangles, a bunch of trapezoids, which I'm not sure I can even find all the dimensions of everything. So I think this is going to be a lot easier route. So the rectangle part is pretty easy. The rectangle is just the height. So the whole base is 15 times the height of 8. I'm going to go 15 times 8. And my whole rectangle is 20 centimeters squared. So I want to keep note of that somewhere, have your work. Sometimes it's even handy to write down. You do a lot of work and you might forget what's going on. So this is the rectangle. All right, now remember that this is a symmetric unit. So that means that this trapezoid and this trapezoid are exactly the same if it's symmetrical. Okay. So what's nice about that is I just have to find one of them and then I can just double it. So looking at this trapezoid, I know that the parallel sides. And then the height, which is straight up and down between the two. Okay. Now I have one of the bases is five. I figure out the other base, and I need to figure out the height. They don't tell me what they are, but I have enough information that I can figure that out. Since this is three centimeters, and this shape is symmetrical, I know over here is also three centimeters. These are both three. That's six centimeters. Altogether. I know the whole length of the shape is 15. So that leaves this bottom base has to be 9 centimeters for these three to add up to the 15 up there. Does that make sense? We have 3 centimeters over here, which means this also has to be 3. And the whole thing has to be just like up here, so that means this has to be 9. So now I know my two bases, all I'm missing is my height. I know the height of the entire shape is 8. And I know this space in between the two trapezoids means the combined height of the two trapezoids has to be 6, right, to add up to that. So the height of this one and this one combined has to equal 6 if this is already 2. Now we've already said they're symmetrical, so they have to be the same thing. So that would mean they would each have to be 3 centimeters tall. Okay? That way, if they're both 3 centimeters tall, that 6 centimeters plus the other 2 equals this 8 centimeters height. Now I have all the measurements I need. Now remember to find the area of the trapezoid. We find the average of the two bases. So base 1 plus base 2 is 14, but divide by 2 is 7. So the average of these two bases is 7. And multiply that by the height. 
21 centimeters squared for my trapezoid. But remember, there's two of them. So these two trapezoids all together is 42 centimeters squared for the two trapezoids. So now I can find the area of my you know, The entire rectangle was 120. The two trapezoids add up to 42, so now I'm going to subtract them. The reason I'm subtracting this time is because I did a problem where I found the whole thing, and now I'm cutting out the pieces I don't need anymore. I'm going to take my 120, and I'm going to subtract away my 42. The area of my irregular figure. All right, we're going to practice one more problem like this. Regular figure we're going to try. I'll give you the opportunity, if you want to try to figure out your own, go ahead and pause it right now. Um, I'm going to start explaining how to do it. So go ahead and pause it if you want to try and figure it out on your own, and then you can hit play and check your work and see if you got it right. Okay. In case you can't read this, this says five inches right here. This says seven inches. All right. All right. So now we're going to explain how to do this one. So again, look at it and look for the shapes we recognize. Now I see two half circles right here and here. And again, since this is symmetrical, that means radius of 5. And then, if I exclude these circles, or actually if I include them, I have a big rectangle again. Okay? So first, let me figure out the circle, because that looks like it's going to be a little easier to figure out. So I'm going to use the radius. The radius is 5. So the area of my circle is going to be pi times 5 squared, or 25. Got my calculator. 25 pi is about 78 and a half. So the area of these two half circles, if I combine them, is about 78 and a half inches squared. Now, on my shape, the circle, so I need to figure out the rectangle and then subtract away my circles, because I'm only worried about this interior part of my irregular figure. So I need to figure out both the height and the width of my rectangle to figure out. Now, I know the rate circle is 5, which means the diameter of my circle is 10. Well, this line, this width here, is the same as that diameter, right? There's a radius, there's a diameter all the way across. Also, from here to here is 5, from here to here is 7, and from here to here is also going to be 5. And that's the whole length of my rectangle. So the, line, the 5, 5, and 7 means that this length here is 70 inches. So I have my 17 inches and my 10 inches. So now all I have to do is multiply them. And the whole rectangle is 170 inches squared. Now I have my rectangle subtract to figure out just the area of the part where the circles are cut out. Again, I'm subtracting because I cut out the circles, or the circles were cut out in the problem. So subtract 78.5. Let's add a point zero to make our subtraction a little easier. Borrowing. Ninety point five inches squared. So if you did the problem on your own, you should have got 91.5 inches squared. If you didn't, check to make sure that your 98.5 inches squared and that your rectangle you got was 17 by 10, which is 170 inches squared altogether. Then also make sure you subtracted calculations. All right, we're going to try one more, and this one's a bit of a challenge. So don't be scared if you have a hard time with this. A bit of a challenge, but if you would like to try it on your own, go ahead and do that. Um, just to clarify these measurements, this is a 6 along here, a 5 along here, and this is a 2 along here. All right, so now. All right, so we're going to work this through. Now, this one is definitely more challenging. So again, look to see what shapes you see. I see three little triangles. And again, these are supposed to be symmetrical, so kind of ignore the fact that my drawing is all supposed to be the same triangle, okay? Your little triangle, you see those little lines I drew, but I kind of completed out those Overlapping on top of a circle. All right, I'm going to take it piece by piece and just kind of work through it as I'm going. I'm going to start with the circle because that's probably the easier part. And I see that this circle in here has a radius of 2. So that means I'm going to do the radius squared, 2 squared, which is 4, times pi, all right? So my area of my circle, the area circle, is approximately 12.6 centimeters squared if I round it off. Well, um, area is 12. So now I'm going to go ahead and try and find the triangles and then kind of worry about how all that works after that. But let's go each triangle. 
I'm just gonna figure out one and then triple it to figure out the whole thing. So my base of my triangle is six, is five. Remember, as long as it's making a right angle, it's your base and your height. So these are making a right angle. So six times five is 30, divide by two, and divide by two is 15. So the area of one triangle is 15, but there's three of them, so times three. So 45 centimeters squared is the area of all three of those triangles. All right, so now is the tricky part. The problem is that they're overlapping, okay? And so I'm gonna have to figure out something. Now clearly, I have too much now. If I count the triangles and the circle, I'm accounting for this space right here, and here, and here. This space, this space, and this space has been doubled up. I've counted it twice. I counted it as both part of the circle and part of the triangle. So I need to figure out what part that is and how to all right. Now, if I look closely at my circle, colored in what fraction of my circle? Symmetrical, right? So I've colored in these three. Look, there's three others that aren't colored in. So I basically colored in three sixths of my circle, or half. So half of my circle has already been counted in the triangle and does not need to also be counted in the circle. So what I'm going to do is only take half of this circle to combine with my triangles. So let me say that again. So these spaces I've covered in blue, right now are being counted in both the triangles, triangles, plural, and the I don't want to double count them because my area will be too high then, okay? I look at my circle and realize that it's half of the circle that's dealing with this, three sixths of the circle. So instead of taking the whole area of the circle, I'm gonna divide it by two, and this half of my circle is 6.3 centimeters. That's the number I'm going to add to my triangles to find out the area of this shape. So the area of this shape would be 5 plus 6.3. This time I'm adding them together because right now I am just doing the circle, half of the circle, which is these three parts right here, plus the three whole triangles. And these blue parts are being triangles, but not the circles because I don't want to double count them. So add them up. And I get 51.3 centimeters squared. A little darker so you can see it. 51.3. Now, if you did this on your own, great job, because this was definitely a challenging one. If you have any questions on this one, definitely ask me in class I'll go over it some more. But this is definitely, this would be a, a challenge on the test. It would be one of the hardest problems on the test.